I grew up in Nice Town, um, not too far from, from here. In Nice Town, there was a saying at one time that there's nothing nice in Nice Town. You have a whole bunch of people offering you drugs, guns, and, and just a way to go back to jail or die in them streets. Growing up around here on the other side of the bridge, um, we didn't uh, see a lot of people uh, doing the right things, let's just say that. We hadn't really seen many other people in our family or even in our community that we knew of that were college graduates. When I was in elementary school, my mother told my brother and I that we were going to college. I did very well in high school. I actually got a scholarship for um, a local university. Four years into the five-year program, I had gathered experience through my co-op, and I was offered a great job. When I started working, time just did not allow for me to complete the degree. I'm grateful that I found out about WGU where I could take classes that fit my schedule. It's not only did I walk away with a degree, but I also walked away with a lot of certifications. Shane runs our information technology division, which is a really complex and challenging set of activities. I am vice president of information technology at a company that drives growth to every corner of Philadelphia. It's rewarding every day to know that I'm making a difference. I heard in a poem, if you hang around wolves, you'll learn how to howl. If you hang around eagles, you'll learn how to soar. Um, Shane is an eagle. Even at a young age, he was always trying to figure out how he can help others. He is truly an inspiration to everybody at PIDC, and I think now through this mural, he's gonna have the opportunity to be an inspiration to everybody in this whole community. It's my hope that people will take a look at this, learn about Shane's story by reading the plaque, and be inspired. It feels so good to see him up there and then to think about the road he has traveled. I'm just so proud, very proud. He, he turned out pretty good. You cannot drive around Philly without seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murals. And they tell a story, and it's a neighborhood story. They're important because they tell the story of Philadelphia. They tell the story of the community. And what he shows is to people that they too can do it. A future generation will see that someone just like them can make it. Someone just like them has a story to tell. And maybe it'll spark something in them to say, that's his story, so now I'm gonna write mine. I chose WGU because I really enjoyed the ability to work at my own pace and from home. Earning my degree has put me in the direction I need to be in order to be a really valuable member of uh, the type of company that I work for now and want to continue to work for. I'm really thankful to WGU for helping me get there. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the University of U.
Before I was a nurse, I started out as a nursing assistant and I also joined the military at the age of 17. In 2000, I got a really good opportunity through the military to go to a civilian program to become a licensed practical nurse. And I did that for about 18 years before I finished up my degree with WGU. My name is Andrew Nagel. I'm a registered nurse with the Indianapolis VA and I got my BSN from WGU. In the United States military, I was initially trained uh, back in the 1990s. It was called a 91 Bravo, which was a combat medic. I served in everything from combat support hospitals to uh, ambulance companies. Uh, I did a lot of instructing, and so that kind of brought me to 22 years, and after 22 years, I felt it was finally time to retire. Working at the Indianapolis VA as a registered nurse is outstanding. It's an amazing place to work. I kind of am specialized in that I follow congestive heart failure and COPD patients specifically. Working for veterans, taking care of veterans, working amongst veterans because a large portion of our working force is veteran also. You know, that as much as anything has kept me in touch uh, with my former career in the military and it's been wonderful. For me, the rewards have been being part of a team that goes out and gives vaccinations to patients who are stuck in their homes and can't get out to hospitals or clinics. And they are so thankful. I can walk into a veteran's home and we may come from vastly different worlds. Our upbringings might be different, we might be from different parts of the country, but because we have both served our country, we have that commonality. And as a nurse, that can be a very powerful thing because it helps build that nurse-patient relationship. And they'll chat your ear off. I mean, they're just happy that you're there and so thankful that you brought this medication out to them that's gonna help them you know, save their life, hopefully. Now is a great time to be a nurse. You're gonna feel good about what you do at the end of the day because you're helping people who need help. Once you've experienced the benefits of WGU's affordable, personalized approach to getting your degree online, 
it's natural to want to tell everyone you meet. Now, there's an easier way to let friends and family know about WGU. Refer a Friend is a platform that makes it easy to tell friends and family about the benefits of WGU and earn rewards. Sign up just once to get a personalized link that you can share with as many people as you want on blogs, emails, forums, and your favorite social media platforms. You can track how many people have checked out WGU from your link and earn cool WGU gear in the process. More referrals, more rewards, more convenient. Sign up today to refer a friend and help us change people's lives through education.
Dome at America Center. Live and online from the Dome at America Center, this is the 2022 Western Governors University commencement in St. Louis, Missouri. This ceremony is for the master's and bachelor's graduates. This is a live broadcast and will be available for replay on YouTube and WGU's website. Hello everyone, and welcome to the 90th commencement for Western Governors University. I'm Dr. Taryn Thompson, Regional Vice President, and welcome to St. Louis. <laughs> Graduates, families, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this special occasion. Our ceremony is being recorded and streamed live. A special welcome to all of our online viewers joining us across the country and around the world. We thank you. Your respectful engagement in today's ceremony. If you are able, please stand for the processional and remain standing for our national anthem.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Micah, that was absolutely amazing. Okay, please be seated, graduates, and make sure that we have zero fun today. <laughs> well, good morning to everybody. Now, I need your help to settle a little bet. So those of you who are from the Show Me State, would you raise your hands real quickly? I need to see about how many we have. Yeah, quite a few. Okay, if you pronounce your state Missouri, hands up. Wow, if you pronounce it Missouri, hand raised. Okay, that's what we're gonna use for the remainder of this ceremony to the joy of all of you, I guess. Uh, we would like to thank St. Louis's own Micah Lambert for performing our national anthem. He's a diehard fan of the St. Louis Cardinals. Boy, Pujols, Molina, and Wayno, they were so close this year. Um, he's a fan of theater, he's a fan of traveling, he's a fan of music of all genres. Having traveled the United States extensively as a vocalist prior to becoming a nurse, Micah now lends his vocals to the premier LGBTQ plus vocal groups in St. Louis, the Black Tulip Chorale, as well as the Gateway Men's Chorus, where he is a former board member. Mike is a 2022 WGU graduate. He currently manages the medical ICU at St. Louis University Hospital, where he finds joy in leading an incredible team of clinicians who are dedicated to providing the very best care for all patients and their families. He's been a registered nurse since 2009, and he's a member of the Sigma Theta Tau Nursing Honor Society. It's quite impressive. Thank you for letting us, or for gifting us with your talents today, Micah, and let's give him another round of applause, please. It is my honor and my privilege to convene the 90th Western Governors University commencement. Now, please know that the safety of all of our graduates, our guests, our faculty, our staff, everyone who's attending, this is of the utmost importance to us. We thank each of you for taking the precautions necessary to allow us to host this event safely. Please don't sneeze on each other. <laughs> this year, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. In just 25 short years, we've had the privilege of helping many graduates find new pathways to opportunity through higher education. In the first 20 years, we recognized nearly 100,000 graduates. And now, merely five years later, we're nearing 300,000. We look forward to continuing our tradition of breaking tradition as we work to expand our impact in the coming years. Now, to commemorate this special occasion, each of our graduates here in St. Louis received a silver cord to wear on their regalia. Now, just a warning, it likes to move from one side to the other, so you may want to just grab it as you're coming up for your moment in the spotlight, just to make sure it's nice and even. But on behalf of the entire university, our board of trustees, we welcome our honored graduates, each of you. We congratulate you for completing one of life's greatest achievements. Today is your day. It's a day to celebrate with your families, your friends, your support systems. And graduates, I urge you to take full advantage of what this hard-earned degree offers to you and to your communities. You've worked diligently, many through a pandemic, some on the front lines of the pandemic to reach this milestone. And today, we congratulate and we celebrate each one of you. 
the numerous obstacles, the challenges you've faced, those that you've overcome. You've worked hard. You've studied late. Some of you have studied early. Some of you stayed up all night because you had to. You earned your degrees while keeping commitments to families, keeping your jobs. It wasn't always easy. If it would, it wouldn't be higher education. But you did not stop pushing forward. Your time at WJU has prepared you for your next role, your next opportunity. You're now equipped to propel yourselves, your families, your communities forward, and we know that you're going to be successful. You join only 13% of adults in the U.S. who hold master's degrees and 33% of adults who hold bachelor's degrees. Many of you are graduating with a family member. Take a look at the screen. We offer special congratulations to those who are sharing this accomplishment with a loved one. WGU is grateful to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly institution, and we are especially proud to honor the military members who are graduating, and we thank you for your service to our country. Those of our military graduates are proudly wearing red, white, and blue cords today to symbolize their service to our country, and we thank these brave and selfless patriots. Would those of you who are wearing those cords please stand to be recognized specifically? We thank the spouses, the family members, the friends of our military graduates for their support, not only during their time here at WGU, but during their time serving our country. We appreciate you. Celebrating with us today are many of our WGU faculty and staff. And please join me in thanking them for your dedication and for the commitment to your success. Many of them are in the back row there, so you might want to wave at them before you head out. I've got some statistics about today's graduating class. Did you know that 37% of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree? What an amazing accomplishment. We extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 38. The oldest of you is 18. Excuse me, the youngest of you is 18. Wow, that would be quite an accomplishment. And the oldest of you is 62. It's never too late. 70% of you are women. Now, the average time to earn a master's degree was two years and eight months. The average time to earn a bachelor's degree was three years and five months. How many of you took less time than that? <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I love it. The state with the most graduates with 202 attendees is, of course, Missouri. Now, our graduate that traveled the furthest came 3,600 miles from Fairbanks, Alaska, where it was 33 degrees. I guess you just wanted to uh, leave yesterday's and today's snow showers to uh, have one final summery day here in the lower 48, huh? No, you work diligently to reach an educational milestone that will change the course of your personal history and influence future generations. Thank you, each of you, for allowing those of us at Western Governors University to play this small part in the fulfillment of your dream. It has been our privilege. And now, we have the honor of hearing from two of your fellow graduates. You ready? I'm delighted to introduce Antonio Taylor, Master's of Business Administration in IT Management. He's from Tennessee. Tennessee? Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, okay. <laughs> And then we'll hear from Rebecca Taylor. Uh, she's getting her Bachelor of Arts in Special Education and Elementary Education, and she's from California. So, please welcome Antonio. This is definitely Tennessee, not Tennessee. <laughs> um, I believe that uh, gratitude should always be our attitude. So I first want to thank uh, my wife, Kim, who's here with me today. Somewhere back there, I can't see from the lights. 
um, and our three amazing boys, Torian, Devin, and Deshaun, for uh, their unwavering support, as well as my family and friends who are watching um, back home. And I am not uh, remiss to think that I'm the only one that had a support system. So I would like for all of my fellow Owls to give a round of applause to your support system and those who are here <laughs> celebrating you on today. I'm excited to share this moment with all of you and to be here with the leaders of WGU and faculty. It is said that the journey is what you remember the most even after you reach the destination and wow, what a journey it has been. I'm sure many of us have similarities in our respective journeys and at least have some pieces of our journey that we all can relate to. My college journey started like so many of, others, so many of you others, fresh out of high school, 18 years old, enrolled in a standard four-year university. Now here I was, an 18-year-old, living away from home, no parents, no streetlight curfews. Oh, let the party begin. And boy, did I party. <laughs> Who knew that unlimited partying and drinking while having eight o'clock classes was not the right mix of work-life balance? Fast forward two years later, and there I was, now a 20-year-old and a father. I thought to myself, holy crap, I gotta get a job. So I dove into the world of IT because it was always so easy for me. I abandoned college and my dream of getting that degree. See, in the late 90s, working in IT was all about certifications and not about degrees. I got my first Nobel certification in 1998. And in February of 1999, I began my IT career working for a casino in Tunica, Mississippi. I moved up quickly in my IT career from system administrator roles to network administrator roles. And I continued on my certification path. I mean, I, I was racking them up. Novell CNE, Microsoft MCSA, MCP, ITIL, Lean IT, Six Sigma Black Belt. I have somewhere around 15 to 20 industry certifications. Around 2005, I was asked to take my first leadership role and manage a small IT team at a claims company. I still remember the words of my boss where he said, I see something in you that screams leadership. I accepted the role and over the years, I was blessed to move to different organizations in different leadership roles, but each role was a lateral move. My responsibilities grew, but the title and the money didn't. Something wasn't adding up. A few years later, after working as a help desk supervisor for years, I applied for a manager's role within the company, and I didn't get the role. I was told I had all the qualifications, I checked all the boxes, but I did not have a degree, or the paper as they called it. I realized at that point, I need to go back to school. The problem was, I wasn't 18 anymore, I was close to 40. So I enrolled, enrolled in a traditional university again and can you imagine the first day of class? There I was, almost 40 years old, going to class with mostly 18-year-olds. I thought back to me as an 18-year-old, stumbling in class, half drunk, and I cringed. I said to myself, I can't do this for the next six years. See, that's how long it would have taken me to obtain just a bachelor's degree at this university. That's when WGU swooped in and saved the day. <laughs> At my job, we only had four schools that were on the approved list for tuition reimbursement. So when the flyer came in my inbox promoting WGU, my first thought was, are they even a real college? <laughs> I've never heard of them. Sounds like some off-brand school that would not stand up to other schools and I'd have a wasted degree. Boy, was I wrong. After enrolling in WGU, as crazy as this sound, I felt like the 18-year-old kid again. 
No, not the, not the drinking and partying 18 year old, but the one that had a dream. I crushed my courses. I mean, I was fortunate enough to work in IT for close to 20 years before I enrolled. And because of the model that WU has, I was in heaven. I remember telling my mentor, and I'm sure you all said the same, I'm gonna be done in about a year. And I remember my mentor's words, yeah, right, don't tell me, show me. I completed my undergrad degree in a little over a year and thought, there is no way I'm stopping now. I immediately enrolled in the master's program and I completed my master's program in less than three months. Yeah, I'm one of those Reddit guys spewing false hope. No, I'm just kidding, I didn't post anything on Reddit. I was too excited about what was happening. I completed my undergrad and graduate degree in half the time it would have taken me to get my bachelor's at that traditional university. That's the beauty of WGU. As fate would have it, that same job that I applied for years earlier came open again, and I applied. My confidence level was through the roof. After all, I had two papers, as they called it. Not only was I able to get that manager role, but three years later, I landed another job at an amazing genotyping company in Memphis, Tennessee called Transnetics, where I'm currently serving as an IT director. I went from manager to director in three years, all because I had the paper. WGU made that possible for me. I am confident I would not be in the position I'm in now without WGU. Heck, I was so impressed with WGU model, I actually got a part-time job working as a WGU mentor in the Masters of Cybersecurity program. <laughs> I feel like that commercial. I'm not only a graduate, I'm also an employee. <laughs> now, some of you obtained your degree because it was a goal you set years ago and couldn't finish because just like me, life happened. Some of you obtained your degree because there was a job promise on the other side of the journey. Some of you attained your degree because there's a future job you're hoping to land and you know this degree increases your odds. Whatever your reason, bask in the joy and accomplishment today because you've made it. We made it. No matter what happens after today, nobody can ever take this away from us and thanks to WGU, we all have the paper. To me, WGU now stands for what a great university. I'm trademarking that, by the way. Congratulations to all my fellow graduates. Now, go be great. Thank you. Good morning, graduates, and everybody here supporting your graduates and everybody online supporting your graduates. Congratulations to each one of you for completing your degree and being here today. I know, like all of you, the hard work, strength, ambition, and desire it takes to get here. I know everyone's journey is a little different, but the end goal was the same. When I began with WGU, I didn't know what an incredible journey I was embarking on. I graduated high school in 2010 and went straight to a four-year university, lived in the dorms, ate in the dining hall, had a great roommate. Just a couple of weeks into the semester, I discovered that I was pregnant. It goes without saying that that was not part of my five-year plan. I finished the semester, moved back home, and got started at our local community college. During my three years at that school, I had my beautiful baby girl, married my wonderful husband, and gained valuable work experience in several different fields. My most meaningful experience came from working at Save the Children and our local high school. 
I spent years working as a paraprofessional with incredible teachers who cared so deeply for their students and their futures. During this time, I realized that I was passionate about working with special education students. I loved the opportunity to build deep and meaningful relationships with these kids and with their families. Shortly thereafter, I searched for the best college options available and happened upon WGU through my mom, who was also considering her earning her degree at WGU as she was pursuing a teaching credential in California. During this busy time, I gave birth to our incredible baby boy and moved into a new house. While my mom ended up going a different route, I found that WGU was the perfect fit for me. I enrolled and met immediately with my program mentor, Sean Despins. We talked about my future goals and what my educational plan looked like. I was determined to accelerate through my four-year timeline and get to work. Over the course of my time at WGU, we talked about school, family, and work. She really helped me succeed through the program. My last year of school, COVID hit, like probably a lot of you. <laughs> and I was beyond thankful that I was able to continue my education uninterrupted. WG was incredible with the adjustments they made for their students who needed to complete observation hours and demonstration teaching. I also was able to finish my regular courses, work two jobs, take a term break, all while on maternity leave with my youngest daughter. I concluded my demonstration teaching right on track and passed my ed TPA on the first try. <laughs> Thanks, <impressive>. Teachers College. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> WGU allowed me to take control of my educational needs, my financial needs, and still have time to be with my family. With the support of my family and my program mentor, I was able to finish in just two years. While I participated in a virtual ceremony right after my graduation, I was invited to come here and walk with my little brother, Joe, who has absolutely crushed it at WGU as well. How could I say no to that? <laughs> so I wanna say thank you to Sean for caring about me and supporting me, even when school and work And having three kids was just too much. Thank you to my parents, Matt and Jennifer, for instilling a work ethic and empathy in myself and my siblings that have allowed me to be, find my passion and be successful. Thank you to my husband, Ryan, and our children, June, Jack, and Rio, for being my inspiration and my drive. And thank you to WGU for providing an incredible opportunity to be the best version of myself and help me get to where I am today. Thank you. Thank you both to Antonio and to Rebecca for being here today, for sharing your stories with us. Antonio, your journey is not like so many others sitting here today. In fact, WGU is the largest university that nobody has ever heard of in most cases. So I love how your mentor encouraged you to do what you said you would do. Don't tell me, show me. That was absolutely amazing. You're the epitome of why WGU was established. Congratulations on your success. I'm glad to hear that your experience was so positive with WGU that you came back to work for us. It's pretty cool. And Rebecca, finding your passion is something we all search for. I'm happy you found yours. I'm so delighted that we were able to help you in a situation where most other institutions, traditional institutions, couldn't. But I'd like to thank your mother for being the best WG recruiter in California. Two graduates today, Mom? I think you're out there. So, wow. Congratulations both to Rebecca as well as to your little brother, Joseph. That's actually absolutely fantastic. But now I'm pleased to introduce our commencement speaker, Maxine Clark. This is a very exciting story. Maxine is the founder of Build-A-Bear Workshop, a teddy bear-themed retail entertainment experience. In 2004, Build-A-Bear became a public company traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And today, there are more than 400 Build-A-Bear workshops uh, worldwide. Over 200 million stuffed animals have been sold worldwide. I think most of them are in my house, just so you know. Um, Build-A-Bear is also celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. And, uh, 
you have this kind of really special 25th anniversary bear that just so happens to be silver, and when you duck it out in WGU colors, it looks really special here, doesn't it? So um, this is silver. He's going to be here for your speech for today. But um, anyway, congratulations to Build-A-Bear for this fantastic milestone. Maxine stepped down from being the chief executive bear in 2013 to start her next act to help unleash the potential of women and minority entrepreneurs and to use her entrepreneurial skills to create platforms and places that give access to more St. Louis families. Her latest venture is the Del Mar Divine, the transformation of a neighborhood eyesore, the historic St. Luke's Hospital, into a multi-use real estate development and it opened in late 2021. Maxine is the founding managing director of Prosper Women's Capital, it's a St. Louis-based accelerator for women-led businesses. She's, the board of, she's on the board of advisors for the Lewis and Clark Ventures, and she's an advisor to the TXO Fund. Maxine is a member of the Build-A-Bear Workshop Board of Directors. She's a recent past member of Foot Locker Inc.'s Board of Directors. She's also an emeritus member of the Washington University Board of Trustees and a board member of Barnes Jewish Hospital, Goldfarb School of Nursing, Operation Food Search, New America, PBS National, as well as the local nine PBS station. You have no time. I'm so glad we got into your schedule to be here. This is fantastic. Uh, in 2017, she was named to the Missouri Public Affairs Hall of Fame. In 2015, she was named the Woman of the Year from the Greater Missouri Leadership Foundation. Maxine lives in Clayton, Missouri with her husband, Bob Fox. She's a graduate of the University of Georgia, go Bulldogs. And she holds an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from St. Louis University, an honorary Doctor of Human and Letters from the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and an honorary Associate's degree from St. Louis Community College. Please welcome Maxine Clark. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction and bringing a bear to the graduation means a lot to me. Welcome all of you to St. Louis. I think you can see that we ordered this Chamber of Commerce weather just for WGU. I'm honored to be this commencement speaker for the Western Governors University St. Louis commencement. Graduates, I know that you have worked very hard to get to this point and for that you should be incredibly proud. At Build-A-Bear Workshop, we like to say that it takes a village to raise a bear, and the same is true for you. It has taken the support of all your families, your friends, and your employers to help you get to this point, and I would like to say all of you, congratulations. There's a lot to be said for getting a degree after you've been out in the working world and know better what it is you want to be when you grow up. You make different and, of course, more mature choices. After all, you've been out there in the world and you have observed what some might call the good, the bad, and the ugly. You've had the opportunity to see what you liked and what you didn't like, to observe managers that you thought did it right and those that you thought didn't. But more importantly, to evaluate your own performance and see opportunities for improvement. Many of you decided you could be even better leaders. You've had the chance to use your education to learn the, the ropes needed to do it better and more important, make a difference for your companies, your fellow associates, your families, and your communities. It's not uncommon to be observers and see how things could be different. Many a proverbial water cooler conversation is held with just that in mind, but that's all it is, just conversation. It takes a different, it's a, it's a very small group that takes it upon themselves to do something about it, and you are part of that small group. Those that want to be part of the solution not the problem. Those that want to improve their personal performance and that of their companies. You know you have a chance to use your, now you have a chance to use your degree to fill in the gaps, to do it better. One of the many skills that you've acquired while studying at Western Governors University is the ability to balance many things at once, school, work, family, and community, and be the most important, this may be the most important degree of all, master of multitasking. I have yet to meet a successful person who could not manage many things at once. And this is the one skill that will for sure serve you well throughout your career. Like you, I have also been on a similar road, similar road to self-discovery and fulfillment, getting an advanced degree of sorts. I'm one of the fortunate few who knew exactly what they wanted to do since I was 11 or 12. 
work, make money, be independent, and make a difference. Neither of my parents had a college education. In fact, I was the first of all of my cousins to graduate from college. I've been on that path for many decades now. After graduating from the University of Georgia, I joined the training program at the May Department Stores in Washington, D.C. And during my first few months as a trainee, I had the privilege of hearing the then CEO, Stanley Goodman, speak to a group of young executives. I remember that day as if it was yesterday, and as he was speaking to me alone. Stanley was truly a Renaissance man. He was a wise businessman, musician, art collector, and benefactor. He always spoke with passion and flair, and he said that day and many days thereafter, retailing is entertainment, and the store is a stage, and when the customer has fun, they spend more money. When the customer has fun, they spend more money. That very day, those words changed my career. Stanley helped me see my work in a different light and with a much more joyous purpose. I was no longer a sportswear buyer. My job was to create fun. What I was selling was not the latest fashion, but a soup that would help that person get a job. And that day I began to put my heart, as well as my brain, into every decision I made. Throughout my career, I can say I was most successful when I was having fun and creating fun for others. In essence, connecting with my customers. I moved up the ranks at May, moving from Washington, D.C. to St. Louis, and eventually to Topeka, Kansas, to head the May's then largest division, Payless Shoe Source. This was the job I had dreamed of and worked of, for so, or so I thought. Don't get me wrong, it was a really wonderful job. I've always said you can never have too many shoes or too many teddy bears. My bank account was filling up rapidly. I was a woman in my early 40s holding one of the top positions in retailing. But trouble was, my psychic income bank account was near empty. My job in being in retail industry no longer seemed fun. And the higher up the ladder of success I went, the further from the customer I got. The customer had all the answers I needed for the next big item and how we could grow our revenues, but they were not on my schedule. My day was spent in meeting after meeting, often studying the competition rather than the, what the customer wanted and needed. And rather than sit at the water cooler and gripe about it, I decided it was time for a change, to put my money where my mouth was and give back to the retail industry that had been so good to me. At 47 years old, I knew that what was in order to do this, I needed to know more, to get more education, if you will. One thing I've learned for certain, unless you walk out into the unknown, the chance of making a profound difference in your life is pretty low. Part of every change process requires us to take stock of ourselves and to understand where we've come from so we can know where we are going. Yes, even at 47 years old. Today, some 25 years later, I can say that this is still true. Many of you took that same step into the unknown when you decided to pursue your degree. Up until this point in my work, I, I thought I, the real work was doing my job and all that it entailed to get ahead. But what I found out is that the real work is in finding out what you're supposed to do with your life. One of my strengths is I have always known what I didn't know, and I've never been afraid to admit that and find the answers to those many unknowns. In this case, I knew I was a creative person and that I'd always been successful when I could use my creative talents properly. I loved the retail business. It was my passion. But I felt that the fun had gone out of it, and I could put it back. I could make a difference. And the day I walked away from my job as president of the then $2.3 billion Payless Shoe Source, I had no idea what business I would buy and recreate or what type of business I would start from scratch, but I knew it would involve kids and the child that was begging to come out of me again. So I went to the best source, kids. Who better to tell me what was missing than the audience I wanted to attract? I, wanted to, uh, I spent several months immersed in getting my kid PhD. I spent time with my friends' kids at their schools, baseball games, and around the neighborhood, most of the time just listening and observing because being four foot ten, I was accepted pretty easily. <laughs> On a simple shopping trip in 1996 for the newest Beanie Babies, my friend Katie, who was 10 years old at the time, suggested that Beanie Babies were so simple, maybe we could make them. She meant go home to my basement craft room and we could make them from scratch, make a pattern, cut it out, sew it together, but I heard something different and I saw a totally different possibility. And that day, the idea for Build-A-Bear Workshop was born. Less than 12 months later, in October of 1997, at the St. Louis Galleria, we opened our first store. And now, 25 years later, we have over 400 stores around the world. Who would have thought that possible from a Beanie Baby shopping trip?
<laughs> I might add that it's nice to be sharing our 25th anniversary here with you at WGU. If I've, yeah. If I've learned one thing in my life, it's that listening is a very important key to success. On a practical basis, listening is important because you cannot possibly have every idea. Where would Build-A-Bear be if I hadn't heard what Katie was really saying? It's like a newfound freedom. It isn't all on your shoulders. Listening is also a sign of respect. It's a path toward creating credibility with another person. In my case, my customers and my associates. Through technology, we have access to so much more input more feedback, and more learning. And it also allows us to connect with the people we can learn from the most, our customers and our associates. The ability to acknowledge what we heard is just as simple. Listening allowed us to develop one of the most important features of Build-A-Bear Workshop, the ceremony of putting a heart in your furry friend. This was the idea of a friend of mine, Sarah Russell, who inspired me to add this special aspect. I had met with her just before we opened, and I explained each and every stuffable animal to her. She said, Maxine, these are such a part of you or someone you hold dear. They must have hearts. And today, over 200 million stuffed animals around the world have hearts and the wishes that you've put in that go with them. Putting hearts in bears and our hearts in our work has made us unique and successful. Our first board of directors were kids who today are grown-ups with their own children. They informed us of what we should and shouldn't carry. Listened to them, listening to them kept us on our toes and in the know. It just seems obvious to me that companies would want to have their customers on their boards and on their side, but few, if any, do. Take my word for it, some of the best ideas are staring you in the face right now. Take a breath, just stop and see, and most important, listen. Because until we open our eyes to the possibilities like we did when we were kids, we just can't see what is possible. Many of you are parents, and I know you can recall your own children wanting to always know, why can't we do this, Mommy? Or who said this won't work, Dad? Or just simply, why? That is the kid-like possibility I'm talking about versus it will never change philosophy spouted at the water cooler. In the beginning of Build-A-Bear Workshop, many people said it will never work. Why would anyone want to make their own teddy bear when they can buy one easily off the shelf? Why indeed? Today, their tune has changed a little. Many people say to me, I wish I'd thought of that. But retailing isn't their passion, and neither are teddy bears. Maybe their passion is computers, or writing, or working in the aeronautics industry, healthcare, or sports. I can't tell you how to develop a breakthrough computer software system, but I can encourage you to be resourceful, to reach inside your kid's soul and ask, why not? In the 21st century, especially since the pandemic, the competitive playing field has been leveled. The jobs for your skills are numerous, and the wages much improved. Being an entrepreneur is also a more likely possibility. Log into Google.com and enter Publish Your Own Books, and the world could be at your fingertips. In fact, there are millions of entries willing to assist you in being your own publisher. No more excuses. An accountant wanting to relocate to Hawaii? Indeed.com and Zoom can make it possible for jobs anywhere to be accessible to anyone qualified in searching. Marianne Williamson, the author and spiritualist, once said that our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. The power has always been in our hearts, but the fuel is now at our fingertips. I can't give you the advice on how to use more creative techniques in your thinking, but I can encourage you to look inside what makes you happy, what you love, what makes you smile every day, what you're passionate about. Listen to your heart. Several years ago, I had the good fortune to meet Terry Bradshaw, the former quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was telling us what great fortune he had in being paid to do his hobby, play football. By then, he was making three times as much money as a sports announcer, but he still wished he was playing football. In today's world, getting to do what you love is easier, and if you love what you do, you will always do what you love, like Terry Bradshaw being paid every day to do your hobby. I have yet to meet a person who loved what they were doing that was not thriving personally, emotionally, and financially. That choice that I made to leave a prestigious, safe, secure, and high-paying job changed the trajectory of my life. I became the quarterback of my own life. It opened the door to all that astounding possibilities that have since unfolded and that continue to move me forward every day. 
I live in a state of happiness, fueled by a passion for everything I'm committed to. The company I created, the people I work with, my husband and friends, St. Louis, my gratitude for my good health, and my personal freedom. I know that I created this happiness by choice. I do know it's not just one choice that makes the difference. It's all the many choices that lead you to the ultimate moment when you make the strongest stand in commitment to yourself and the life that's calling your name. And that is when you know you are being paid to do your hobby too. You made a powerful choice when you decided to get a WGU degree. Now you have the added education, incredible contacts, and the mental ammunition you need to be successful. But that's just half the recipe. The way to have ha happiness and be successful is to follow your heart to what's right for you. You can never be happy living someone else's dream. Live your own, and for sure you will make a difference for those who work with and for you, and you will know the true meaning of success. I have a quote on my dresser at home that I hope you will take to heart. If you can live your imagination, your life will be a dream come true. Congratulations to all of you, and I hope your WGU degree makes your imaginations explode and all of your dreams come true. Thank you. Maxine, what a great story. That was absolutely fantastic. Now, I do have to give one caveat. After all, I am the compliance guy of the university here. Um, if any of you graduates from the accounting program plan to support the state of Missouri from the Aloha State, you may need to be licensed as a CPA, both in the state of Hawaii as well as in Missouri. So just wanted to throw that out there. Your dedicated, dedication to helping women and minorities succeed is truly inspiring. I love how the simplest of ideas can turn into such powerful entities that help change the lives for the better. I've literally spent hours in your stores to craft my own teddy bears, including that one, believe it or not. But um, in the same way that your basement craft turned into Build-A-Bear workshops, some musings by governors as they gathered in a tiny resort town in western North Dakota turned into Western Governors University. By the way, that town, Medora, North Dakota, zip code 58645, sits at the entrance to the Theodore Roosevelt National Park, the man after whom the teddy bear is named. Randy Hudson Bueller, the president of the Theodore Roosevelt Medora Foundation, thought you ought to have an original teddy bear. So he sent this gift to you, and this truly is the President Theodore Roosevelt teddy bear from the original teddy bear company. So thank you for your inspiration to our graduates today. You did, after all, say that a person cannot have too many teddy bears, so there we go. We've got two for you. Now, I'm so excited to allow Debbie Fowler to come up so that she can finally confer your degrees upon you. Debbie. It's time! Thank you, Lucas. We will first recognize our master's degree candidates who, as you may have noticed, wear a hood bearing the color of their discipline. So with the candidates for master's degrees and educator endorsements, please rise wherever you may be here or online if you are able. That's it. Oh, you guys did much better than they did in Indy. Good. All right. Upon the favorable Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree or endorsement you have earned to include the Master of Arts, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Education, the Master of Health Leadership, Master of Science, Master of Science in Nursing, or Educator Endorsements. Yes. With all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations and welcome to the community of innovative, bold, and credible professionals. Be seated for a moment. And now, our bachelor's graduates. With the candidates for bachelor degrees and post-baccalaureate teacher preparation endorsements, please rise wherever you may be if you are able. Ready? Up. All right. 
Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and Member Governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree or endorsement you have earned to include the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science in your areas of specialization with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. You may now move the tassel from the right to the left side of your mortar board. What a beautiful sight. Congratulations and welcome to the global community of college graduates. Yes. And you can be seated for a moment. The following leaders from each of our colleges will now invite graduates to the stage for their moment in the spotlight. Casey Clark, Vice President, Dean of Faculty Administration, College of Business. Scott Jones, Vice President, Academic Operations, Michael O. Levitt, School of Health. Chris Hemmuller, Administrative Director, College of Information Technology. And Dr. Aaron Popham, Academic Vice President and Dean, School of Education. Casey, you're up. Good job. Thanks, Debbie. All right, College of Business, we're up first. Would you please stand with me? We just have one more finance exam for you to take. <laughs> just kidding. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and leadership of the College of Business, we'd like to congratulate you on this very special day. Please come forward to be recognized individually at the direction of the marshal. Kumail Mir. Jewel Wright. Morgan Gillahan. Amy Beth Aruda. Zahir Herrera. Mindy Lou May. Anne Antuna. Robin Denson. Taryn Kapler. Dana Mastronardi. Floyd Heidi III. Robert Butler. Jennifer Myers. Bobby Brooks. Kelly Wesner. Caroline Kennedy. Hannah Rabideau. David Coe. Benjamin Matthews. Brian Malikdom. Mike 
Micah Lambert. Nathan Bursley. Antonio Taylor. Andrea Young. Bonnie Platy. Jeanette Niger. Saida Shumalia Quadri. Tracy Etzel Gendro. Christopher Huckabee. Tyler Haney. Elizabeth Gimra. Heidi Olibear. Karen McLaughlin. Patricia Ernest. Angela Owens. Maria Mesquita. Matthew Schaub. Jessica Oppenheim. Karen Dacumia Wimmer. Don Hargrove. Cheyenne Lovelace. Darnesia Thompson. Corey Lovelace the second. Robin Perry. Olumide Amabadi. Laura Weisenberger. Todd Williams. Angela Young. Rachel Vitali. Jordan Van Horsen. Jennifer White. Bridget Bashnagel. Tyler Rector. Danielle Amy. Tyron Lucas. Deborah Shepherd. Swati Boot. Heather Clark. Chastity Ferguson. Bianca Allen. Jennifer Hines. Hunter Thorne. Sangeetha Vasantha.
Jody Kramer. Cynthia Ham. Eamon Hennedy. Stephanie Gazar. Brian Scott. Jennifer Pimbleton. Anton Gates. Cynthia Prince. Elena Florento. Khadija Mohammed. Jessica Gant. Angela Cabaz. Dane Nagaoka. Ilona Swan. Carmen Copeland Johnston. Marquiston Hall. Sarah Vitito. Michael Toombs. Chris Champion. Adam Nelson. Dan Wilford. Janae Irvin. Michael Gardner. Irene Natsis. Samuel Bradford. Teresa Fitz. Krista Kell. Lindsay Ingolia. Carl Adolphus Sponeman. Asia Collins. Chelsea Brown. Janerice Carter. Tiffany Buford. Bridget Harrison. Kevin Schindler. Carolyn Coleman. Janelle Hall. Nicholas Labitz. Ramonda Shelton. Scott Doyle. Ajit Kumar.
David Madden. Latasha Lockett Ingram. Earl Spivay. Jonathan Stewart. Emmanuel Egby. Amy Buss. Heather Mahalik. Marissa Warren. Daniel Daniels. Jordan Hoosman. Demetrius Hinton. Hannah Graber. Joshua Lloyd. Matthew Polovic Molds. Courtney Wilburn. Nalani Scott. Sasha Buck. Andrea Snyder. Caleb Tofa. Christina Johnson. Philomena Laduna the third. Raymond Wilson. Leo Mares. <laughs> Nadia Cologne. Paige Starks. Bridget Sobecki. Sherry Mailer. Randy Welch. Amanda Cooper. Deshauna Stamp. Christine Zuglas. Matthew Versheldon. Daniel Todd. Annette Farber. Talisa Galarmo. Isaiah Gadsen. Sarah Hosford. Tammy Schusler. Annabeth Conley. Jerome Hughes. Renee Ziegler.
Ivan Davila. Corey Watkins. Gregory White. Jordan Venegas. Michael Hargrove. Stacy Renee Sands. Jean Scobie. Victoria O'Donnell. Matthew McMillan. Jeffrey Kankalinski. Christopher Eckert. Rebecca Olson. Lauren Blankenship. Cassie Range. Lisa Eisenberg. Ian Crook. Richard Gussler. <laughs> Sally Saiga. Nicole Carroll. Derek Douglas. <laughs> Jennifer Volmer. Mark Jones. Timothy Glump the second. Jason James Francis. Rebecca Erickson. Michaela Pope. <laughs> Lindsay Heathman. Jay Canada. Olivia White. Holly Mesa. Sarah Morse. <laughs> Crystal Kelly. Reiner. Mandy Suter. Helen Chastain. Tracy Bird. Teresa Brown. Kimberly Miles. Kristen Allard. Kathleen Gramkowski. Dawn Rose. Dakota Wallace.
Deborah Buchanan. Justin Bartlett. Xavier Jones. Andrew Smith. Charles Klingenpil. Vanessa Prieto. Madison Bauman. Wesley Edmison. Jessica McGinnis. Elise Cotton. Elizabeth Hunter. Fred Stamper. Janelle Cross. Violet Nobles. Dawn Sullivan. Julie Ellis. Zachary McLean. Amber Jones. Holly Sandlin. Congratulations to all of the graduates from WGU's College of Business. Levitt School of Health graduates, it's your turn. And uh, the faculty, the administration, and staff want to send our congratulations on your milestone today. Also thanking you for your service and, and life-changing service in our communities. And now we would, like to uh, uh, we would like to have you come forward to be recognized individually. Bianca Mian. Nicole Meyer. Claire Osman. Irina Shevchenko. Tanya Cavalung. Augusta Singleton. Michaela Krebs. Denise Miller. Jennifer Orlin Wilkes. Denise Harmon. Corey Billings. Kimberly Barlow. Anne Bostead. Carolyn Johnson. Tabitha Bagar. Tara Lewis. Jill Martin.
Rebecca Bossler. Irina Green. Vanessa Johnson. Christy Callahan. Rebecca Napier. Patricia Chisholm. Megan Miller. Hannah White. Lauren Murray James. Ruby Edwards. Marissa Hoffman. Christina Lyle. Lori Ann Harmon. English Pierce. Rebecca Jensen. Sydney Kraft. Kelsey Clark. Lisa Kidd. Marla Flanagan. Shannon Wilkerson. Sarah Cagle. Denise Zuniga. Audie Hamblin. Chelsea Newton. Dominique Simon. Brett Barnes. Desiree Anderson. Kelsey Landman. John Anderson. Tracy Picorni. Esther Perizzo. Amy Altman. Shannon Tillsworth. Lisa Chavaria. Rebecca Jones. Eric Viston. Elizabeth Gill. Leslie Griffith. Jane Workman. Dernay Stacy. Michelle Gnell. Renata Weaver. Jennifer Burke.
Paige Brown. Catherine Miller. Avina Nazaire Charles. Aurora Smith. Marie Nazaire. Jennifer Martin. Nikisha Bond. Eric Paziwigan. Kimberly Cooper. Yolanda Michelle Rhodes. Keisha Mason. Trevor Hickman. Joseph Randall. Maggie Fries. Christina Johnson. Mary Denise Strasser. Rachel Shaman. Zenny Poidesus. Holly Todd. Josie Moreno. Jacqueline Fitzpatrick. Dominica Brooks. Tracia Edge. Aubrey Keller. Nicole Barr. Anna Hall. Natasha Hawkins. Mary Ann Baker. Ashley Martins. Misty Zorns. Paula Upshaw. Shauna Elam. Vanessa Widener. Debbie Mary Hall. Brooke Keeling. Latasha Dressler. Jennifer Redfield. Ariel Vanessa O'Neill. Heidi Whalen. Dana DePuya. Francesca Swayze. Christy Hauser.
Emily Simonich. Nicole McDonald. Joshua Slaughter. Amina Sani. Brittany Orr. Amber Underwood. Amanda Henry. Effie Lyles. Brandy Blossom Game. Cassandra Ott. Delicia Martinez. Cody Dayton. Erica King. Ronald Weaver. Mallory Daniel. Congratulations to all the graduates from the Michael O. Levitt School of Health. Well, the graduates from the College of Information Technology, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually. All right. You got, you got to stand this way. Stand yeah, this way. we're done, right? <laughs> Mina Saad. Michael Lawson. Alexis Coral. Mike Sanders. Jemima Mwangi. Gary Knowles. Matthew Hubbard. Sarah Northam. TJ Quintus. Samuel Northam. Michael Card. Christopher Kuntz. Randy Phillips. David Myers. Jacob Walker. Kayon Varada Rajan. Danielle Zimmerman. Manish Bata Ari. Devin Clement. Daryl Mosher. Peter Ibrahim.
Alexander Groves. Lakitra Buchanan. Gaurav Arora. Andreu A.G. Ching. Lawrence De Beer. Marvin Ostry. Caitlin De Beer. John Houtman. Hakeem Ibitoye. Olivia Jonah. David Wagner. Razia Sultana. Olatunbusen Ayodele. Matthew Dickel. Nishant Joseph Paulraj. Cynthia Armstrong. Celestine Chumo. Francesco Delacroix. Amanda Height. Seth Contreras. Donald Ryan Williams. Michael Viverito. Mikhail Nettle. Angel Sanchez. Michael Labrier. Philip Cheek. Tarek Taylor. Nancy Kasky. Kevin Brown. Matthew Kasky. Joshua Burnett. Lucas Esser. Oliver Masanke. Brandon Irby. Kyle O'Connell. Richard Davis. Austin Bullard. Robert Kane. Luke Mattingly. Faith Fernandez. Christopher Michael. Benoit Jacob. Trayer Lee Harvey. Dion 
Deandra Dyson. Casey Sieber. Melissa Crow. Austin Waymiller. Chloe Castillo. Aaron Mandeville. Jason Castillo. Michael Iannucci. Adam Kuhn. Nabil Afsar. Michael Rausch. Jamie Albright. Brett Wimpenny. Andrew Elsesser. John Heisman. Ramin Abedinia. Ryan Bone. Caleb Dale. Aaron Wright. Christopher Biondi. Jennifer Goodchild. Congratulations to all the graduates from WGU's College of Information Technology. Good morning, School of Education. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and leadership, we extend a warm congratulations for work well done. Will you please rise and come forward for your moment in the spotlight and be recognized for your efforts. Heather Davidsmeyer. Anne Marie Clark. Alejandro Johnson. Jennifer Litton. Grace Burns. Brandy Warren. Christy Tao. Cindy Kaufman. Megan Labati. Rihanna Porter. Rhonda Turner. Nancy Baldwin White. Reva Theroff. Rebecca Kell. Tara Klotz. Angela Kurtois. 
Amanda Hathaway. Matthew Everett. Erica Williams. Marta Louisa Smith. Teresa Arelli Godina. Rebecca McQuaid. Lee Desai. Ashley Kaiser. Heidi Mueller. Elizabeth Wright. William Ryan Gillum. Tamra Fortner. Ashley Olson. Sherry Lawson. Jennifer Zeiss. Felicia Miller. Olivia Goodman. Stephanie Colburn. Deanna Johnson. Tanya Carey. Asia Mabry. Andrea James. Melanie Bankston. Morgan Cruz. Christina Bellman. Michelle Taylor. Caitlin Nay. Robin Xavier. Jennifer Doyen. Valerie Avalos. Tyler Barola. Carrie Lynn Church. Tracy Hayes. Crystal Radcliffe. Stephanie Dingman. Brianna Lynette Armstrong. Paige Douglas. Jessica Rach. Lakenya Wade. Jaina Beebe. Ashley Mesker. Crystal Rector. Elizabeth Morlock.
Catherine Smart. Landon Valines. Aline Smith. Larissa White. Rosalie Starkey. Hannah Miller. Josie Anderson. Danielle Drews. Lauren Robinson. Lana Foster. Kaylee Gray. Andrew Hine. Emily Nunnery. Haley S. McMullen. McKenna Evans. Jasmine Tucker. Carlissa Hager. Patricia Schuyler. Destiny Donnelly. Timothy Zeons. Leslie Ann Trujillo. Angela Thompson. Michelle Tisdale. Karen Pearson. Dana Tanner. Caitlin Johnson. Kaylin Mosher. Shamanda Tyler. Brandy Brown. Crystal Wake. Kayla Redwing. Tina Holland. Kara Fraunfelder. Amanda House. Ashley Haig. Kimberly Moon. April Updike. Kendra Job. Aaron Chernako. Courtney Smith. Abigail Brickner. Jeanette Foster. Laura Davis. Brittany Loduca.
Bailey Sneed. Courtney Wiley. Claire Wilson. Ginger Holston. Jordan Montgomery. Joseph Jennings. Brenna Mass. Rebecca Taylor. Congratulations to all the graduates from WGU's School of Education. We are so very proud of each and every one of you. You are the purpose of our work and seeing you here is just such a joy for each of us. Um, I'm delighted to introduce Mr. Glenn Coster Sr. Uh, he's representing the growing alumni community of which you are each a member. In 2013, Glenn com completed his bachelor's degree in business management here at Western Governors University. His life has been one of service that's dedicated to helping others from his walks across the country, his longest being from the tip of Florida to the top of uh, Washington State. To his leadership in community churches, Glenn has always used his influence to help those who are in need. He has already raised more than $10,000 for Central Kansas Children's Organizations, and this year we were delighted to recognize you, sir, as the 2022 WGU Distinguished Graduate. Welcome, Glenn. Good morning, WGU graduates and it's still just barely morning. <laughs> On behalf of the more than 285,000 WGU graduates worldwide, I want to welcome you to the Alum Alumni Association. What a thrill it is for me, and I had hoped my wife would be here, but she's not feeling well this morning. Um, but what a, what a thrill to be here joining you with you at this commencement during WGU's 25th anniversary. Nearly 10 years, 10 years ago, I was graduating and continuing my work in our community. What a rewarding journey it has been. I've had opportunities to reflect on how WGU made me a more effective leader. WGU provided an enriching and engaging student experience for me, and I'm happy to share that my learning and engagement with the university didn't stop there when I graduated. My hope is that that's the case for you too. After all, we are night owls for life. Woo, woo. <laughs> I invite you to stay engaged with the many benefits WGU has to offer through the WGU Alumni Association, including free learning resources, career coaching, benefits, and much more. Visit wgu.edu forward slash alumni to stay engaged. Congratulations, Night Owls, and I hope to see all of you in the Alumni Network. Thank you, Glenn. As we conclude our ceremony today, I'd like to take this moment and recognize and thank those of you who are wearing the blue and gold philanthropy cords. They look a little bit like this. That means that you are supporting WGU's fellow Night Owl Scholarship. These philanthropy cords are not only a physical symbol of a graduate's commitment to WGU, uh, but they also support a legacy that will last for generations to come. Thanks to the incredible support of these alumni and the thousands of alumni who've come before and also donated, nearly $220,000 has been raised for the fellow Night Owl Scholarship that is given to individuals to help them finish and cross that finish line. To date, 180 students have crossed the finish line to graduate because of your generosity. Thank you for your support in helping your fellow Night Owls succeed. Absolutely. For many of you, earning your diploma is the fulfillment of a lifelong goal. 
The degree that you have earned at WGU will create new pathways to opportunity. But it is important to remember that commencement is not the end. The word commencement means a beginning or a start. Today's commencement represents your new beginning. Whatever you choose to do, I believe that you'll do it well, and great things will follow. Our 26th president, Teddy Bear Roosevelt, once said, quote, far better it is to dare mighty things, though checkered by failure, or a couple of not passes, than to rank with those timid spirits who live in a gray twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. You have dared to finish a college education, and you have been victorious. And I look forward to seeing what each of you achieves in your next chapter. But don't stop learning. Learning is a lifelong journey. As you continue this journey, I encourage you to support others who are pursuing their dreams. Your strength, your resilience during uncertain times will add tremendous value to your families and workplaces and communities, many of whom were here to hoop and holler for you today. And as we close today, I hope you'll take a moment to reflect on the pride that you felt while you walked across the stage today. Thank you for letting us here at Western Governors University be a part of your education journey. As you celebrate, please share your excitement on social media using the hashtag WGUGrad. As we're going to do here in just a moment, I'm going to invite Maxine. Will you come up? Let's take a selfie with every one of you in the background. You got to wave. That's better. That's better. OK. Excellent. Absolutely love it. You all are amazing, and you are going to do fantastic things for this country, for your states, and for the world. This concludes our ceremony from this bully pulpit. Thank you all for joining us. Onward.